Whether it's the Mar-a-Lago raid or the unselect committee hoax, the perfect Georgia phone call, it was absolutely perfect, or the stormy horse-face Daniels extortion plot, they're all sick, and it's fake news. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live! Tonight, Jennifer Hudson, Donnie Yen, and music from Park and Poe with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! probably know the first official day of spring. Can you feel it? The days are getting longer. Indictments are in the air. It's really magical. It's, it's the calm before the stormy. You know what we've been saying for years, that one of these days we're going to wake up and Trump will have been arrested for one of these many crimes? Well, that day could be tomorrow. And how do we know that day could be tomorrow? We know that because on Saturday, Trump, in what seemed to be an effort to rally the troops to protect him, wrote, the far and away leading Republican candidate and former president of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Protest, take our nation back. Well, we already did take it back from you. Now go away. <laughs> I don't know, it's, but you never know with him. Either he's about to actually be arrested or he's releasing another round of digital trading cards for us to buy. We don't know for sure, but he went totally Truth Postal this weekend. He said America is a dying third world country. He said the election was stolen. He spelled it with two L's. He called <laughs> for protests. He said they should investigate the investigators. He suggested the NYPD should refuse to arrest him. Let's just say he was very presidential this weekend. He's absolutely <laughs> spinning out because he knows it's Melania's birthday next month and she might finally get her wish. <laughs> If Trump does get indicted tomorrow, the Secret Service would bring him to the Manhattan District Attorney's office for a mugshot and fingerprints, assuming they can find, find an ink pad small enough for his finger. <laughs> maybe they'll use a, maybe they'll use the tip of a Sharpie. Just tap it and... <laughs> Some Trump supporters online have been talking about creating what they, they're calling a patriot moat to surround him and prevent the police from taking him in, which is genius. And as all this is happening, Republicans in the House of Representatives are gathered in Orlando for their annual issues retreat. And they definitely got issues to uh, <laughs> retreat from all the usual low lives are screaming witch hunt about this. Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who at one time Kevin McCarthy blasted Trump over January 6th. Now he sees things differently. I don't think people should protest this, no. And I, I, I think President Trump, if you talk to him, he doesn't believe that either. <laughs> Wait, what? No, what? I think the thing that you may misinterpret when, the, when President Trump talks, when someone says that they can protest, he would probably be referring to my tweet, educate people about what's going on. He's not talking in a harmful way. Right. So when Trump posts something like, in all caps, they're killing our nation as we sit back and watch, we must save America, protest, 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 he doesn't mean protest. <laughs> he means stay home, read up, educate yourself. <laughs> Speaker McCarthy, by the way, isn't the only one embarrassing himself to stay on the good side of the crazies. Mike Pence, the guy the MAGA hatters wanted to hang on January 6th, Mike Pence weighed in with words that are so profoundly meaningless, even if you were to print them out, you'd still have a blank page. Uh, I, I, I know that you think big picture, nobody is above the law. I mean, you don't think Donald Trump is above the law. Yeah, nobody's above the law. But nobody's beneath the law either. <laughs> well, has somebody been gnawing on mother scented candles again? Because <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. And then we have Rudy Giuliani, who thinks we're focused on the wrong thing. Recount Dracula says we shouldn't be focused on what our president paid a porn star to be quiet. We should be focused on Hunter Biden's laptop. The hard drive is absolutely true. Uh, it will reveal a family, not the entire family, but a large number of crooks and perverts. 
I also put the emphasis on the second one, perverts. You cannot believe the con. technical difficulty right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, if anyone knows about perverts, it's the dude who tried to whip it out for Borat's daughter, that's for sure. It's even, even Florida Governor Ron DeSantis defended Trump. He had some BS thing, uh, George Soros funded judge tirade prepared that conveniently ignored why Trump is in this fix. But he also slipped a little zinger in at Trump's expense. You're talking about this situation with, and look, I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. Ooh, well, it's Ronda Sassy all of a sudden. As you might have imagined, that comment did not play well in Trump town. He wrote right back, he wrote, Ron DeSantimonious will probably find out about false accusations and fake stories sometime in the future as he gets older, wiser, and better known when he's unfairly and illegally attacked by a woman, even classmates that are underage, or possibly a man. <laughs> That's what this has come to now. Oh yeah? You're gay. I mean, <laughs> I guess that's all he has left because the truth is, there's no good reason for Trump to be in any of this trouble. If Casanobrain had just paid Stormy Daniels the $130,000 himself out of his Pizza Hut money or whatever, he wouldn't be in this situation. He wouldn't have an issue in New York. So many of his legal problems are based on him being an idiot. If President Karen hadn't picked up the phone and called around Georgia asking to speak to its manager to find 11,000 votes, he wouldn't have an issue in Georgia. If he just tweeted the words, calm down, go home, four hours earlier, like everyone, including his daughters, told him to, he wouldn't have an issue on January 6th. And if the great white hope chest hadn't boxed up his love letters from the Saudis and Kim Jong-un, if he hadn't squirreled them out of the White House and into the rec room at Golf Lago, he wouldn't have an issue with the FBI. In every case, the reason he's in trouble is because he is the dumbest criminal in the world. <laughs> There's no, he's Al Cabonehead is what he is. Here's how different Donald Trump's day was from Joe Biden's today. While Trump was banging on that all caps button with his greasy little thumbs, Biden was hosting the cast of Ted Lasso at the White House. <laughs> Trump's getting ready to be arrested. Biden is eating biscuits with Ted Lasso. And while the rest of the country was watching basketball, this weekend, Trump showed up in Tulsa on Saturday to see the NCAA wrestling championship. You know, Trump himself did some wrestling. He wrestled Vince McMahon at <laughs> WrestleMania. And so this is his area of expertise. There was a kid at this tournament. His kid's a three-time national champion from Iowa. His name's Spencer Lee. He won 58 matches in a row until he ran into Matt Ramos from Purdue. He's going to pull one of the biggest upsets in the NCAA wrestling history. And he's, looking he's, looking get the he's looking for the fall. He's looking for the fall. Oh, oh, Spencer Lee's mom, Kathy, and her glasses did not survive that match. Oh. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate to see, but this is the, this is the, this is what happens here. Dude. Yeah, this, here. If that isn't a lens crafters commercial by the end of the week, a major opportunity has been blown. This is delightful. Coming off of St. Patrick's Day, I want to congratulate our good friends, the 6ABC News team in Philadelphia, for providing us with a, an absolutely stellar edition of the unintentional joke of the day. Here's your exclusive AccuWeather. Now I'm double-fisted in a different way for St. Patrick's Day and to another woman who likes to be double-fisted in a different way, I think, Jess. <laughs> She means beer. She means beer. Of course she means beer. What else would she mean? In Florida, things seem to be getting nuttier every day in the Sunshine State. Republicans there are considering legislation now that would ban teachers from discussing menstruation and human sexuality in elementary school. This is a bill that was put forward by a state House member named Stan McClain. This is Stan. He is a, uh, he's a man with a smile that says, Mommy, I filled my diaper. And he says that if girls experience their menstrual cycle in the fifth grade, teachers would be prohibited from discussing it with them until they're in the sixth grade, which makes sense. If a girl gets her period in fifth grade, you just tell her to wait a year. 
You know, guys, just because your state looks like a penis doesn't mean you have to act like one all the time. And, and this new measure is now creating so much controversy and confusion for educators in Florida, the state legislature had to release a public service announcement. Hi, I'm Clint McIntyre, a public information director for the Florida State Legislature. There's been some hullabaloo recently over what can and can't be discussed in our public schools, so I'm here to clear it up. Can girls ask questions about their first period? Absolutely not, because frankly, it's yucky. Simply put, bleeding is bad. Whether it's from accidentally shooting yourself while cleaning your guns, or hitting a possum with your boat trailer. <laughs> if a confused child mentions her period, <laughs> just tell her it's Whataburger sauce. Like Santa, girls will figure out the truth eventually. Can girls ask their mothers about menstruation? <laughs> no. Why would you? Mothers are women. And if you get mom going, she's gonna mention P-R-E-G Nancy. And apologies to Nancy. That's gross. <laughs> Children need to learn about pregnancy the Florida way. By getting knocked up in the parking lot at a Pitbull concert. So who should girls talk to? It's better if girls don't ask questions at all. You ever hear the phrase, curiosity kill the cat? The cat is dead. That's why we've spent our entire legislative session making it illegal for kids to identify as cats. You won't find a single litter box or tampon anywhere near our schools because they attract coyotes. And here in Florida, we have a saying. Coyotes are like books. They're dangerous. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of cocaine to do. Paid for by the Florida Department of Education and the Daytona Bar Association for T-shirt contest judges. Is this thing still on? Yeah, well, happy Women's History Month, everybody. Put on down.